the mightiest of mighty, the best of the best. These are what we have come to know as the warrior class in Epic 7. Some of the best characters, and if you can check here on the right hand side, it's actually the majority of the characters in the game or just the most that they decided to make for some reason. Today we're going to be going over who is the top five, obviously in my opinion, and I hope you make your list as well. But as the intro needs something, something to attach itself to, we are going to put it on little bit because we know for damn sure she is not making this list. <laughs> What's going on guys, it is your boy Cash, and this is probably harder than I thought. I thought it was going to be so easy. I, I was like, oh, I'm just going to make a top five list of the best characters. What class should I go into first? I started Panjo, I'm like, eh, which one should I go into? I asked my Discord, and the first thing that they say is Warriors. I'm like, that's got to be easy. And I look into this list and I'm like, there are so many nuances, there's so many ick, ah, uh, ah, uh. It's really hard to say what makes a character good and what makes a character bad. So first off, I'm going to tell you how I did the rating. I had four points of contention, or I, th I hope that's the right word. Sometimes, I, you know, you use a big word and you just hope it flies. But if it doesn't fly, you already know. I hope you forgive me, my guy. But I use four points and the four points goes as follow is arena offense, arena defense, or, you know, guild offense, guild defense. I, I can put them as the same thing, PvP. So pretty much offensively, defensively. Then I use PvE as a whole, as an entire whole. <laughs> and then last but not least, I call this effectiveness. The ability to actually do what your kit is made to make you do. So that made it very, very hard because obviously certain characters, if you look through here, they do certain things. Like I was, the Dingo was like, oh, I really wanted him to make the list because he's really good. But we all know he would get the, the straight ones on the buns if it came down to like PVP. Ain't nobody using this man. He's really good though. Or PVE, I should say, because he is actually really good at PVP because his speed is the fastest. He is the fastest AOE cleanser in the game currently. So, you know, it's very difficult about getting these cards down. But yeah, first off, I'm just going to have to say I started with a top 10. And then I did this rating system that I just mentioned. And then I got to a top 5 based on cre these credentials. So I hope you enjoy and get your own top five and let me know what yours is in the comment section below. Number five is gonna be going to my boy, Assassin Cartuja. Now, the way that I said I, I did the lovely little rating, I also forgot to mention in the earlier part is that I'm doing it from one to five for each category, and then I'm just gonna divide it by 20 because five times four is 20, whatever. All right, so of course, I gave the man a five in offense. I gave him a five in defense. The only thing that I got, I, I nicked him, I, I kind of gave him a low score on was PVE. You really don't use him that often in PVE. He doesn't really fit too well there, in my opinion. He's kind of cool. You can kind of farm with him, but I feel like you just don't see him that often. So I actually gave him a one on that. I gave the boy a one on PVE. Forgive me, forgive me. As far as usefulness and, and the ability to get like to utilize him, I gave him a five there too, which kind of made up for it. Is actually why he gets a point eight at the end of the day for me, which is obviously the fifth score. So he actually did really, really good. The battle frenzy to me is what makes him so, 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 so good. Arena offense and arena defense, his evasion tactics, his overall BS is just what makes him such a strong character. Even though he's not that great in PVE, is he's just so strong of a character in pvp that he got two fives there and it kind of carried him out and his effectiveness is just him you know stunning and defense breaking and slowly putting the bleed so he can pretty much kill any target you know over time it just takes him a little bit longer to do it he's definitely going to be my top five Next up, spot number four is going to go over to Martial Artist Ken. Now, obviously, you guys know Martial Artist Ken is a phenomenal character. He's such an amazing, amazing boy. What an amazing guy. We already know how his kit works and all that good stuff. So, of course, on Arena Offense, if you are putting this guy into the middle of the fray, I had to give him a five for that. You know, he's really, really good. He's going to do a phenomenal job. Unfortunately, on the defense, I did nick him one point. I couldn't give him a five because he just 
kind of gets sniped. <laughs> he kind of gets sniped. I gave him a four for that. Uh, he definitely gets sniped in there. I do think that he's not overall squishy, but most of the time when you fight against him, you're going to either leave him to last. You kind of kind of avoid him a little bit, and then you're just going to take him out whenever you feel ready to. It's more like he, it's more or less his company the company that he keeps that makes him very strong and annoying meanwhile like i said assassin katuja i gave him a five because it's him that is actually providing the stupidity himself now when it comes down to pve i did give him a four in that same regard because he actually is a really good farmer he can definitely help you and I, i'm pretty sure he's helped a lot of people progress into this game as a, a support friend unit whatever they call it in this game and he's able to hold his own in pve he also can help you in certain obviously uh, like dungeons and certain hunts if you need to use him obviously he's not the best choice but he'll still get the job done as a nice reliable unit in my opinion and then last but not least i had to give the man a five when it came down to being useful in his role he sits there he keeps counterattacking for free he has a 30 percent chance to counterattack if you crit him he's definitely gonna counterattack actually that one specifically will do a crap ton of damage you put the man on lifesteal and he pretty much does his does everything that you want he even has an attack break he has an aoe defense Defense break that increases his attack at the same time this guy has everything that you need but not everything like every everything but we're gonna still have to go up and we're gonna have to go over to number three number three is gonna be going on to my girl judge Kisei also did not know that she was a warrior always thought she was a thief because probably because other Kisei is a thief and for some reason she just gave me the aura of a thief but <laughs> she stole my heart now with the new buffs we got to think about the new buffs and then you're probably wondering why Corvus didn't get in here with the new buffs he got like a seven actually to be more specific Kisei and Ken pretty much tied I wanted to bring up Ken as four and give her the third spot because I feel like she's just a little bit more useful than he is now obviously Kisei has a defense break on the s1 she gets the buff removal with the, and the aoe does a lot of damage by the way now and the s3 is the cooldown thing which is really 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 where she kind of like comes in and flares so of course for offense i had to give her a five she's really good you know when you're putting her in there and she's gonna do her job especially with the s3 and now she even has cleave potential which is ridiculous but like i said for the four as far as defense i do think that she can just get sniped out yes she can be speedy uh if you go speedy you lose some damage but i feel like that's the thing is that they'll either if they need to kill her they're gonna kill her there's not much to stop you from doing that and then she doesn't get her job off i would have gave her a three in that regard but i still feel like some people will protect her in some you know just a little bit though they won't let her die so easily so she will be effective and she will hit you with that alt and you're gonna be needing to bring some immunity yada 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 so i still gave her a four because i still think that she is still pretty effective on defense just as well as she is on offense now for PVE, I gave her about a four as well. Now I know people are like, what the hell, how, how? I gave her a four specifically because of her S3. She's the only, not the only, but she's one of the characters that can reset the cooldown of bosses. So for PVE, she's one of the only ways uh, outside of, I think, what, one or two other characters that can actually reset or slow down the bosses using their alts. And I think that that is really, really highly regarded. At least I specifically highly regard that. That's why I gave that actually a five. And she still buff strips, which is really good in a lot of PVE stuff. AOE hits in two skills, which is good for clearing, good for farming. If you need to put her on lifesteal because you got her in early in the game when you still need that, I think that that's still a pretty good option. So again, I'm not expecting you guys to agree with all my things, but I do think that Judge Kisei is the bee's knees, but not the complete knees of the bee if bees even have knees whatever all right it's time to piss some of y'all off <laughs> number two is gonna be general purgus now i know i know i know i know i know you're like what the hell is he doing on this list now i don't think that people really utilize this guy or they maybe just don't have him but i actually think he's very very strong i really think that he's just underutilized or just underrepresented in the game um he has an s1 that provokes 
which is really good. And if you check the mask of daisies, it goes up to 75% on a S1. That's really good, especially for stopping people to using skills. That's going to be PVP, which is why he's definitely getting a five. The real ability to kind of provoke characters with a high ratio is pretty good. You can also see that with Fallen CC, just saying. Now, Spearhead is the thing that I think is really, really, really underwell. Increases all allies' combat readiness by 15 when you Molagora it up when the caster is attacked. You know, as long as he gets attacked, he's going to boost everyone's combat readiness up. This allows you, I feel like early game when you want to do some of the hunts, really allows you to kind of put him in a tank role. He doesn't need to really do much, but just sit there and take DPS and he will constantly, constantly keep boosting combat readiness to your team. And I cannot stress how important that is in this game to get free combat readiness whenever you can get it. So I really think that he's so good in defenses also. That's why I also gave him a five in PvP defense because a lot of AOE that's in the meta right now, having something that has that little essence of what Moonlight Bal does in your thing, as long as he's getting hit, doesn't matter if he's sleep, doesn't matter all that other crap. As long as he's actually getting hit, he will start boosting up your team and then you'll get a turn. So he's pretty good to slap on in defense just because they have to be mindful of who they're hitting and then of course on offense like i said you will put them into a comp where there's most likely going to be aoe in the mix and it's going to help you get your dub swing back to pve and that's why i gave him a four because of this passive again because of the fact that you can bring him into certain comps bring him into certain hunts into certain stages where you know he's going to keep getting hit and give your team give your healers give your attackers more turns overall and it's really good then i bring into the s3 hits all the enemies stuns has a high chance to stun two targets and i think it's 100 percent at max it's two random targets kind of sucks increase the attack of all allies as well so you can even start off with the s3 stun two people and then give your attack boost to the squad i really think that that just is really good i think his overall kit is amazing i gave him a five on that as well and that's why he actually gets a 0.95 he's just just slightly above ken and kisei i just really think that this character is just really underutilized i really like him i probably like him too much just an overall great guy so make sure you guys leave a comment below on what is in your top five and you can give me your top 10 as well i don't care i'll read them all i comment back all the time every comment if you guys don't know that's what i do so can you guess before i put the till i drop the veal drop the curtain can you guess who it is huh you think I went Commando Lorena? You best not think, because I hate that chick to the death of me. <laughs> anyway, let's get to the top. Number one, head honcho in charge. It has to be Luna. I have to give respect to Luna. I don't like Luna. I didn't summon for Luna because I just was, I don't know, I was being a little pissy boy. But I have to admit her credentials. She's by far, in my opinion, the best warrior in the game. In my opinion, five all around. I gave her a perfect score, uh, absolute perfect score. She's amazing in PvP offense. You know when to pick her. You put her into a thing. You know what you're doing with her. On defense, she's gonna do her job as well. Yes, you can try to snipe her, but usually a good Luna is not gonna be too easy to kill. And then when she's low, her passive kind of helps her stay alive. And that's not a buff that she's leaving there. That is her passive. And currently, there's no way to turn off passives, so she just has innate defense, and you can't crit her as easily you have to keep that in mind you can't ignore that then we go for pve she's one of the best characters in the wyvern she kind of helps you really progress through the game also being a limited character means that most people have her and again you can't ignore these facts <laughs> just every other character that i named are pretty much not limited characters so you might not even have those heroes it's kind of a, a toss of the coin if you're going to have those heroes but luna is limited so the the majority of the, of the free to play and the pay to play player base of this game have this character and this, she's, that's the reason why. So again, especially if we go down to usefulness, uh, she's amazing. She still has the, the, the defense break, and then she has the S1 that does a boatload of damage. It's, it's good in PvE, it's good in PvP, it's good for you and me, and that's really all I gotta say. I, I can't deny how great this character is. I really wanted to bring in characters like Yufine and stuff like that, but oh, like sometimes you know things don't count as buffs like i don't know like it's really difficult it was really hard but again let me know what your guys list are and of course if you don't have a list maybe you don't care about the warriors let me know what category to go into next should i go with the mages the thieves the soul weavers i don't want to do soul weavers by the way because soul weavers sounds like a nightmare it's gonna be that's gonna be the most opinionated thing i've ever seen in my life 
outside of the fact that Ruel is going to get number one. But outside the top four, the other four, that's going to be hard. Anyway, every day at the casino is your lucky day, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.